Joining me now is Alan Minsky. He's the executive director of Progressive Democrats of America. Alan's been involved in progressive politics for decades. He was the program director at KPFK in Los Angeles for from 2009 to 2018. He did led Pacifica Radio's national coverage of elections. Uh, did podcast for the nation, Jacob, Jacob and Magazine, contributed to Common Dreams, Truth That You Get It. Alan, uh, welcome to the program, brother. Hey, great to join you, Cenk. It's uh, great to be here. I'm in Washington, D.C. It's a bit strange here tonight. The city is a little empty. The government shutdowns is impacting a lot of people who work here. But at the same time, this is a uh, historic moment for the Democratic Party taking over the House of Representatives. And it's also a historic moment for progressives because I think the progressive wing of the Democratic Party is more powerful than it's been in recent memory. And uh, now is the time when the rubber hits the road for progressives in the House of Representatives. Is are going to put forward their ideas and they're going to receive a hearing from the American people. And there's going to be contestation inside the Democratic Party over uh, how that party is going to uh, uh, be moving going forward. Yeah, I love that you're optimistic. <laughs> so I want to tap into that. Uh, so you're normally in LA. You went to Washington for the uh, launch of this uh, new Congress. Um, tell me why you're optimistic about uh, the progressive agenda. Oh, I think I'm optimistic because, for instance, I, you know, I and friends of mine tune into shows like TYT, and you all put out there uh, an unabashedly progressive position on policy after policy, and it's persuasive. And I think when the American people get a hearing of what progressives are proposing, both in terms of what they would do to improve people's lives and the fact that they are attainable and achievable goals that will improve people's lives, I think people are going to be persuaded by that. And I think that there is going to be that hearing. Uh, so let, let me toss back to you. Wouldn't you say going into the Democratic presidential primaries, which are pretty much starting almost right away, that uh, the progressive wing of the party has momentum in terms of the battle of ideas. And I think that's also going to play out somewhat inside the House of Representatives, though I think political pragmatism and how the party leadership allows ideas to really get debated is going to be an issue. And I think we as progressives, when you know people put forward uh, progressive policies, we should be adamant that they deserve a hearing. And uh, we should uh, make sure that the American people are aware that they're on the table. So, Alan, I'm of two minds on that. Overall, I'm super optimistic, and I, I you know, told people at the end of 2018 uh, that 2019 is going to be uh, potentially a great year. Uh, and so, uh, that's a that's a hell of a promise. Right? <laughs> I can't make that happen <laughs> single-handedly, right? right? I'm just right. trying to see read the tea leaves to see what the power players are doing and where we're going, et cetera. So I share your enthusiasm. On the other hand, uh, I don't want people to get the wrong impression. In order to get there, we have to defeat other Democrats. Uh, right. And so uh, right now, Nancy Pelosi's uh, uh, pushing forward PAYGO, and um, it's terrible. Uh, so it'll uh, right. defeat all the progressive priorities with one uh, rule. And it's uh, and so they have to be defeated. I just don't. I want people to be clear-eyed about that. Uh, Nancy Pelosi is not your friend, and um, Steny Hoyer is not your friend. They are mm -hmm. looking to defeat all of our ideas. They're yeah. to me, they're in some ways a worse enemy than the Republicans because they can do what the Republicans can't. I know what I got with the Republicans, but when your own so-called leadership blocks you, they must mm -hmm. be defeated. Um, I hear you, Cenk. I also think I think there are just two things about that. One is, um, you know, we are at a sort of cusp moment for progressives because you know this is an hour right now. Uh, I think the Democratic Party is different than the Democratic majority that took over in 2006. I mean, Medicare for all wasn't something that was being discussed nationally. It certainly had nothing like the Green New Deal, which, when it does get presented, I think is going to have things like job guarantees. Uh, you know, folded into it. You have $15 minimum wage push, you have free public colleges, a whole bunch of social domestic economic issues that are being bandied about, of course, in the wake of the Sanders campaign that were nowhere to be, you know, seen in, in 2006. And, um, uh, and, and I think also the presidential election that's coming up, I do, I expect that the, um, when you have something like Medicare for all that's supported by 70% of the general population, take Republicans out of those poll numbers, how many Democrats support them? So what's gonna happen in the presidential debates over Medicare for all? I'm very hopeful going into that, 
that, you know, Steny Hoyer and Nancy Pelosi can block what they want to block. But the discourse among Democrats nationally, I think uh, we go into the next cycles with a lot of op- reason for optimism that Democrats are going to win the battle of ideas. And also, I don't mean to be cynical because on the one hand, of course, I'm excited about the Democratic Party uh, getting the House majority. It's essential to put a check on Trump. But let's also be honest, there's not a lot of uh, progressive policies that could pass the House that would become law any time in the next few years, you know, as long as Mitch McConnell controls the Senate and Donald Trump. So the presentation ideas, the, 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 the arguments back and forth about policy, the appropriate direction of the party and the country are arguments that progressives can win. Will they pass their legislation through the House? Will, will Pelosi and Hoyer block it? They'll certainly block a yeah. lot of it, I agree. Yeah. And I think we have to make that contrast very apparent to people. I also think, though, because it's a transitional moment, I think we should do it uh, with the with the idea of really persuading as many people as possible. And uh, and then, of course, yeah, the ones who stand with the, the big money in society, they will be exposed. Yeah, so, uh, but I think we've already won the battle of ideas. I mean, do... Medicare for all is at 70%. Do they need it to be at 80% or 90%? No. Remember, remember, it's a progressive position, and Nancy Pelosi is the one killing it, not the Republicans. So, well, no, I, I, I agree, but we have to make it into law, which means we have to make the, and you know this is, you know, we're, we're arguing here, but I know that I'm exactly on the same page you are, Cenk, because we know what we need to do, which is to have the Democratic Party be in a position that when they win the presidency with a progressive president on January 21, uh, 2020, we can move forward progressive legislation. And, you know, we have to prepare. And Progressive Democrats of America are an organization that does this. We have chapters across the country. We we look at whoever the federal representative is. Uh, are they being naughty or nice? If they're a Democrat and they're being naughty, yeah, we're going to primary them. We're going to primary them with a progressive. We're going to primary them with a progressive, hopefully with a progressive presidential not Democratic nominee in 2020. And you know, let's see who who ends up winning that that district. And of course, we're interested when we have Republicans who are the incumbents, the Democrat who challenges them also to be a progressive. I think it's an opportunity in the next few years to have that kind of seismic shift. Where on January 21, 2020, our goal. Sorry, yeah, sorry, January twenty first, twenty twenty one. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. That we have the opportunity to uh, really push forward progressive yeah. legislation yeah. that will help people. I, I'm just so um, sick of having to fight Democrats on democratic ideas. But uh, so I like how your description of progressive Democrats of America, though it makes you sound like Santa Claus, which I like. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, but uh, for people that don't know the organization, can mm-hmm. you tell us just a little bit more about what distinguishes it from some of the other progressive groups? Well, I actually think I mean, I think I, I wrote this in notes to people in TYT headquarters. You know, TYT and PDA have a very, very important thing in common. And that we really uh, made it clearing calls for progressive politics and progressive politics inside the Democratic Party when those ideas were very much in the wilderness. PDA started in 2004. Uh, of course, TYT has been around, you know, well before the Sanders campaign. PDA was the first national organization, really the only national organization, to call on Senator Sanders to run for president before he declared his uh, that he would run for president. We we made that call way back in 2014, and so we're just an unapologetically uh, progressive organization. But like TYT, we understood that the two-party system is the only game in town. And I know you're a journalism outlet, but you know there's there's uh, you know clearly a lot of opinion that's put forward on on your marvelous network. Uh, you know, letting people know that you know we have to change public policy. We have to do it for the sake of the planet. We have to do it for the sake of people's lives in this society, and for the entirety of American history. We've had two parties. Uh, the one time a party collapsed, the, the Whig Party. There was another party, the Republicans, that replaced it pretty much almost instantaneously, and they were right back to a two-party system. So it's the only game in town, and since it's the only game in town, we have to win that game, and that's what PDA is yeah. about: it's about turning the Democratic Party into a really Powerful progressive institutions so that we can have, you know, social economic justice in the United States. Of yeah, I totally, yeah, I, totally I totally agree with that. Uh, I think that the Democrats um, have this giant aircraft carrier, and it is basically, you know, the analogy I use is let's just board the carrier and take it. Uh, we don't have to build an aircraft carrier by ourselves. Uh, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. And so that's, I feel like progressive Democrats of America have been trying to do that for some time. And, and now, finally, I mean, we're both optimistic because we're having some success in doing that. 
Yeah. And also, of course, in, in order to be able to do that and in order for us to um, build the critical mass of people as we win the battle of ideas, uh, we need we need TYT and, uh, you know, to get the information out to people uh, to explain to people because it's not going to be explained in the corporate media. Yeah. There's just I mean, too much about, you know, American uh, large multinational corporations that are at odds with the interests of the average person in the society. And at odds, actually, also a lot of the time with the welfare of the planet in terms of the crisis of the climate. And uh, it's so we, you really need independent media like TYT uh, is essential in terms of winning the battle uh, for our hearts and minds that allow for the social transformation that we need to have in the country. I really appreciate you saying that, Alan. All right, everybody, please check out uh, pdamerica.org, pdamerica.org. Uh, Alan Minsky, Executive Director of Progressive Democrats of America, fighting the good fight. Thank you, Alan. Thank you so much, Jim. Thanks for watching this free clip of Rebel Headquarters. Don't forget to become a TYT member today for more exclusive content. Join now at tyt.com slash join.